Okay. Hi, I'm Susan Koenig, and this is Somatics for You. We're going to be working with our forearms. And people don't even realize that the forearm has a joint. We have the radial bone on the thumb side, and on the baby finger side, we have the ulnar bone. And there's a membrane in between the two bones, attached to the two bones. And then right, right under the actual elbow joint, there's a connection, there's a joint of the radial thumb side bone into the elbow and the ulnar bone into the elbow. And again, at the wrist, the radial bone connects into the wrist joint and the ulnar bone connects into the wrist joint. And so it's, it's actually a kind of complicated area. And when the elbow is bent to some degree, then there's this rotation where the thumb side, the radial bone, rotates around the ulnar bone. And you get this rotation. And this is actually what allows the hand palm, to go palm up and palm down. Palm up, we, that's called supination. You can drink the soup. Pronation, prone to the goddess. Um, so I'll, I'll use those terms sometimes, but I'll do palm up or palm down so you don't have to know any of the anatomy at all. Um, a lot of, we can accumulate a lot of tension in our forearms. Just like we can accumulate a lot of tension in our upper arms, we can accumulate a lot of tension between our wrist, our fingers, our hand, our wrist, and our elbow both on the anterior or front of the arm and the posterior or back of the arm. And so I'm gonna show you some simple movements to do for the rotation of the forearms. We're gonna work with the pendicular process. That's the process whereby um, we're going to make a voluntary contraction in one direction and then a slow controlled release back to a neutral position, and we're gonna repeat that a few times, and then we'll do the opposite move pendicularly. The wonderful magic about pendiculation, it works with the motor cortex, which organizes voluntary movement and is a very important part of any voluntary movement. But what pendiculation does is it resets the resting tonus or resting level of a, of a muscle. We often accumulate a lot of extra contraction. We feel it as tension and tightness and lack of mobility, pain. And we can ha accumulate a lot of held tension to the point where it's really painful for us to turn our forearms. And what pendiculation does is it reduces um, the level of held contraction in the target muscles that we're using when we do the pendicular process. And so that's the process we're gonna to follow today. So I'm gonna grab a pillow, I just took a chair pillow, and I'm gonna be demonstrating with uh, one forearm today. Yes, you can do both forearms at the same time. It's, there's a lot more for the brain to pay attention to when you're working both forearms. But maybe you don't have a lot of tension there, but you want to just make sure you've reduced your tension, so you might want to work with both arms. If you, let's say you have a lot of pain or forearm tension in your right forearm, you may want to do the work. I would suggest you do the work with the, with the right forearm, then with the left forearm, and then come back and work with the right forearm. So it just depends on your situation whether you're going to work one arm at a time or both arms. And it might also depend on your time. So I'm going to uh, start and I'm just going to use a pillow so that I can place my, uh, my arm bending at the elbow so I have a surface that makes it really comfortable. And I'm going to start with my palm up so I'm in the supinated position. And I am now going to start the pendicular process where I voluntarily contract and turn my hand over. And then as I slowly release, my hand only goes about that far. So I have to actually bring it back into the starting position. 
that's because I'm we're working I'm working more um, perpendicular I, I'm working more parallel to gravity instead of gravity coming down like if I was flexing an elbow now gravity is helping me be a weight or a load but when I'm and when I'm working more it, it parallel to the earth like this I don't have the same advantage that gravity gives me as if I'm working in this sagittal plane. So I'm going to, again, do the voluntary movement, do the slow controlled release, and then bring my hand back to the starting position. Once again, I'm rotating over, I'm doing a voluntary contraction, I'm doing a slow controlled release, and then I'm going to turn my hand back to the starting position. I'm going to start now uh, with my hands pronated palm down, and I'm going to do a voluntary contraction, contracting the supinators, slow controlled release, and then just bring my hands back to a starting position. And again, I'm going to voluntarily contract the supinators to turn my palms up, slow controlled release, and then bring my hands back to the starting position one last time, Voluntar voluntarily contracting the supinators, slow controlled release, and then bringing my hands back to the starting position. I'm going to do those simple pendiculations with uh, my elbow even more bent. So I'm going to put a pillow, maybe I'll put it this way, pillow below so that I can now rest my elbow. And, I'm, and, and instead of having my just a little bit of a bend, I'm going to bend quite a lot and work in this position. So again, I, I find a starting position. I'm going to start with my uh, this would be a pronation. My, in this position, my palms are forward. I'm going to voluntarily contract palm to my face. Slow, controlled release. I run out about there. And I'm just going to bring my hand back to starting position. Voluntarily contract palm towards my face. Slow, controlled release. When it stops, I just continue to the starting position. One more time, I am voluntarily contracting, slow controlled release. Now I can <clears throat> just stop here where my relaxation, my, my oomph comes out of the move and I can work from here. But I, I often like to come back to my starting position, which was this way. Now I can have my starting position be, this is supination palm to my face. I'm voluntarily contracting in this direction, palm forward, slowly release, and coming back to the beginning position. I'm voluntarily contracting to bring my palm forward, slow controlled release, and coming back to the original starting position. Voluntarily contracting my pronators, slow controlled release, and then coming back to the original position. I can do this double-handed, contract, slow release, come back to starting position. Voluntarily contract, slow release, come back to starting position. Voluntary contraction, slow release, starting position. I can have the starting position be palms out, pronation. I'm supinating voluntarily, releasing, coming back to starting position. I, my, my thumb is a little bit tremoring, which it does once in a while, and that's okay. It's just part of me at this point in my life. And I'm uh, contracting, voluntarily contracting, slow controlled release, back to starting position. Voluntary contracting, slow controlled release, coming back to starting position. One more time. 
voluntary contraction, a slow controlled release to starting position. 